Hi, Rishaya. This is um, this is Anam Abbas. Welcome to yeah. uh, DAP screening and Q and A. And thank you for joining us. And thank you for sharing your film with us. Um, uh, where are you? Where are you joining us from? Uh, I'm in Mumbai, in my, my home. <laughs> okay, and and how's uh, how's things how's things in Bombay? Um, I don't know. I think everyone is fine doing their own thing. I mean, I don't think it's doing well, but everyone is kind of moving on with their life in whatever way, whether or not they should be. <laughs> Uh, that's that's pretty oh, much yeah. here as well. Um, it, it's yeah. uh, it's pretty much the same. It, it's I'm we're just happy to have some cinema to share with audiences here to keep us keep us entertained through this. Um, I, I I would really love to know more about uh, the process of you uh, meeting Roshan and Mani and how this uh, film came about. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um... Basically, it was done as part of my college project. So uh, I studied in NID, uh, National Institute of Design, which is in Ahmedabad in India. And um, we have each module, like every semester, we have to do one film. So one semester, we had to make a documentary. So we're out different things that I was interested in and I was thinking of doing something on um, like the minorities in Ahmedabad and my friend that's not something that's generally talked about like I'm half Parsi my dad's Parsi so um, she was saying that why don't you look into that and just do something related to that which would be more personal to you as well so I uh, the Parsi population Really, Parsis are dying. Uh, if you don't know what Parsis are, they are people who came from Persia, like, uh, and they settled in Gujarat, and then most of them right now are in Bombay, in Mumbai. Uh, of course, there are some in Pakistan as well, and all over the globe. But in total, Parsis are maybe like less than a lakh, so they are, uh, and they fall this religion or astronism which is also seen in the film to a small extent um so basically in Ahmedabad there are right now around two three thousand Parsis so very small population but because um they had initially come to Ahmedabad uh like back in the day a lot of them were in Gujarat so there were some uh organizations so they have like a Parsi Panchayat in Ahmedabad as well as Mumbai and other places so I went there and I spoke to people there. They have a few fire temples as well. So I went there as well. And I was just talking to people and trying to figure out what I could do related to the topic. And uh, another thing that happened simultaneously was my grandfather, who I lived with, um, had a, like, a fall. And he was like not doing very well. And mentally, he was not very uh, he was not doing very well. So I think that was also playing on my mind. I was thinking about the fact that at the moment, Parsis are a dying population because the people um, who are born are much less than the people who are dying. So every day, a huge, a much larger percentage of the population dies than is born. So there are a lot of uh, people who have not got married, not have children, and um, which basically means they're alone. They're living alone. So... I wanted to explore that and I got this directory like it was this random thing that they had decided to do in Ahmedabad in the Parsi Panchayat. They, have, they made a directory of everyone's names, phone number, address, ages, like all the Parsis in Ahmedabad, there's this directory. So I was like, okay, let's see this directory. <laughs> and in that it showed how many people were living alone, basically. And because they were just like one person, right? It's not like all together as a family. And their ages are like, you know, 78, 80, 82. And I, I just made a list of those people. And I was like, okay, initially I wanted to do it in an old age home, actually. But there was no such old age home. Like it was there and it closed down. So um, I was just looking at these people and I started calling them up and 
it would be like oh she's dead and it, these weird conversations and then finally the first person actually that i met uh, was roshan aunty and i thought she was living alone because in that it said that she was living alone like only her name was listed but when i came in it wasn't roshan aunty money aunty opened the door and she was like hey i'm like are you roshan aunty no i'm money okay and then she said oh i'm just here for a few days i'm going to go back to bombay and that's where i live and then in that one conversation that i had that afternoon with them i realized that uh it doesn't seem like she's going back and they seem to be living together and their relationship and they were quite uh entertaining so initially i wanted to have more than one person who lives alone but then it ended up being okay, i think that it can be just about them so long story yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's fascinating, and I think it's it's really funny that uh, they were tagged as being like you know without family. Because you know, I guess it's probably like the idea of being married and having kids as the only kind of family. And this is yeah. also you know this is also a way to have companionship. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, and their relationship is so fun, and they're always the, they're kind of taking the piss uh, also uh, with each other. Yeah. Uh, how was that really? How how did you build that sort of um trusting environment or how much time do you spend with them to be able to really get uh to capture that dynamic between the sisters so i think i was quite lucky because um roshan aunty especially was quite comfortable and open with me probably because i am a uh with me and um sorry mm-hmm. rishai i think we lost you for a second uh, yes, can you repeat yes. your answer yeah. yeah 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 um so i was saying ki i think because i am from this we're dealing with Not some maybe, internet you know. issues today Rishaya once again I think we lost you once again. It connect. Yeah. Um, just a second. We're having a uh, lots of tech woes today on and on both ends. Uh is that okay? Yeah. 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 so yeah just that because we're from the same community i think they were more comfortable and uh, before starting the shoot also i had gone over to their house a few times maybe like three four times and uh, i had also gone to one of their kitty parties they go for the kitty party like i didn't include that in the film but uh, roshan aunty goes for these walks every morning and she has because there are not that many parties obviously their friends are all gujaratis and hindus and stuff like that so um they have a big kitty party and i went there and i uh, took videos of them chatting all random things but um i think over time they became a bit more comfortable and as people also they are a bit chilled out like they don't really care about oh someone will see this and think ke you know how are we and all that kind of stuff so <laughs> i think that helped <laughs> Um uh, do you think there is a the stereotype of the of Parsi aunties that you were uh that people have that you're breaking somehow with this or 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 what Um interesting I'm not sure what the stereotype is of Parsi aunties actually <laughs> but I think yeah I mean if you see films definitely there's a lot of that uh, lingo that people think you know an accent and the way that the I don't know like I recently read this document about uh, Parsis where it's all like they keep saying dikra dikra everywhere in the document I'm like okay yeah that's pretty much all that people <laughs> refer to when they talk about Parsis okay. We're reconnecting fingers crossed there we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh I think that's true of most communities that uh there are a lot of stereotypes in film and um if the person isn't 
from that background you don't really know much about it right so how are you going to show what the scene really is mm-hmm. so that way yeah but i'm not sure what a specific stereotype would be of parsis because i don't think they have that much of a screen presence but yeah um i i think a lot of i mean um sort of what my research on the parsi community in karachi there's a lot of the same sort of um community left right where the younger people have migrated away uh in, in from karachi specifically okay. so there's a lot of older people um there is that sense of uh, a culture maybe uh you know not being um uh, not dying out in a sense right the buildings yeah. and the compound were are, are abandoned and isolated um and then specifically they're like making a, a film about older women is, is and mortality seems to be a, a theme of, of the film and is that something that you hmm. came to or is that something you're already thinking about when you were thinking about the community at, at large um yeah i i think i was definitely thinking about uh old age and loneliness in some sense i don't know if it is specifically loneliness it is and it isn't of course uh but yeah that idea of if you you don't so actually in this case they are they were staying together but um for a lot of people they haven't got married they haven't had kids either they live with their siblings or they live alone and even as a community or kind of almost dead so it is a lot of um death <laughs> related to this whole uh subject i guess <laughs> yeah so that uh, was that, that- I, and I, I like that the that is, but also is married uh, at the same time with the sort of ageless dynamic of the sisters that they're arguing like kids yeah. so it's, it's it's a um you know i think we all see that with the older people in our lives that they're you know the roles reverse and everything <laughs> yeah. yeah is, is there true. did they did they see the film what did they think about the film uh oh so now the sad story comes so uh, basically uh, after i finished the film uh, after uh, i went back to meet them for lunch and i actually was quite confused about how to show mani aunty the film because like there's that scene where roshan aunty says ke oh you know she doesn't remember things and so i i really was actually concerned about how she would react which is of course not fair on her but um i exported one version of the film without that one scene where roshan aunty is speaking specifically about her and i thought ke okay theek hai i'll show her that maybe it'll be a little better um and when i went to the house for lunch uh, roshan aunty wasn't at the table i'm sorry mani aunty wasn't at the table and uh, so when i asked roshan aunty where she was she said ke she has sent her to a home and i thought it was a joke and it wasn't a joke so like literally a couple of months after this film was made uh, mani aunty was um, put in a home where their brother also used to live uh not to get or anything but yeah and roshna did used to visit her and all of that she does visit her even now but yeah they stopped living together so i guess um i don't know <laughs> is that but i did show it to roshna aunty i showed it to her daughter roshna aunty's daughter and i sent it to her so like the family can watch it as well but i want to meet mani aunty i haven't met her since the film like i shot the film but i don't i mean she definitely won't remember me and i don't know how to go about it, it i don't know <laughs> okay bye bye <laughs> so i'm here i i pressed the wrong button sorry um i'm wondering <laughs> though, that brings up uh, the idea of like us as filmmakers and when when one decides to finish a film and 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 so did you deliberate any point being like okay maybe this is an ending i need to add on to that film because at the moment it's it's sort of like open ended um you know um sort of non plot based film um and so yeah. what is that process for you and and how did you think about um, this new information 
Uh, so actually, so basically, it was a classroom thing, right? Like it was a college project. So I had already submitted it. It was like done, basically. So technically, we're not allowed to change it. Apparently, I mean, I could change it, of course, but um, you know, whatever. And it is definitely uh, something that changes your perspective after watching the film. But I also. Uh, like my mom was like you must put it at the end of the film like oh and then she put her in an old age home and it just felt very ah, you know like not nice like i was trying to you know poke in the wrong place something i don't know i mean if it came up or if someone watched it and asked me a question i would be like ha huh, you know that's what happened but it felt very weird to put it in the film as a deliberate you know I don't know. The footnote, even right? It's yeah. Probably, it's not that for them. Yeah, that's that's really difficult. It's really it's it's difficult. And and during the process, then when you were doing it for school, like when did you know when it, when I think that's the biggest question for filmmakers, especially when you're doing documentary. When you stop shooting, is it just the semester oh. ending? <laughs> yeah. But as it was literally yeah. that, they gave us the camera for four days, and we shot for four days. so that was it um there there was yeah like one day before that i had gone to shoot that aunty kitty party thing and one day after that they had this um like a get together this party thing that we had gone for which there was nothing to shoot actually it was very whatever so essentially all this was only those four days when they gave us a college camera and we shot so that was it and actually in those days also there was so much uh, that so much more like they just kept saying things that were amusing and i had a lot of sound issues so a lot of things i couldn't put in and i was like so sad like oh my god the sound is so bad and i really want to put the scene in but i can't <laughs> so that way uh well you're you're at the beginning of of this of this sort of rigmarole that you have to go through even i mean there's always yeah. some sort of guidelines even if there's not if there's not a semester there's there's something there's something yep. sort of breathing down your neck really um you have a comment from Rishal Khan he says very nice film very sound cultural value um Rishal i i'm wondering so well what 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 kind of person would you aspire to be when you are at that age oh wow that's an intense question um Yeah, I mean, I think the way that they are is pretty cool. Like, is I mean, of course, apart from the fact that Mani Aunty has uh, some issues with uh, recollection and whatnot, um, she is like, I mean, both of them they're so independent. It's really weird. Like, they cook for themselves. They like, I don't know. Physically, they're fine. Basically, <laughs> you know, they're like. and they are very chilled out like i don't know they seem very um, of course i'm not saying that like especially now they are not lonely of course they are so that is something a bit scary uh, but apart from that yeah i think that they are really cool i like them <laughs> i don't know if that's the answer to the question great i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the, that's the stuff we all we all hope for. Um, I, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, we kind of started with some technical glitches, so I didn't do yeah. uh, an introduction um, right at the top. So I'll just quickly do an introduction now. Um, so um, after after your degree in sociology and literature from Saint uh, Xavier's College, Mumbai, Rishaya studied filmmaking in the National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad. Um, so which 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 school was this film made in? Yeah, this was in the National School of Design, National, uh, National uh, Institute of Design. Okay, oh, great. <laughs> and uh, Rishaya seeks to connect people to stories that resonate with the sight, sounds, and feelings of real life, and and we 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 really see that in this work. Um, we have a question. It's my, my I I'm wondering this as well, and and we also have a, a question uh, from uh, somebody watching the Q and A. Mustakim says. uh wants to know about other projects you're working on uh, or really want to work on in the near future. Uh so at the moment nothing much. Like I'm working with this writer who does like web series and screenplays in Mumbai. So at the moment I'm doing that um and like we're not really working on a film but two of my classmates and I are in like 
initial stages of oh my god you know now we're working and we should be making a film let's try and write something so <laughs> that's all that's happening at the moment <laughs> yeah so you work in both fiction and documentary which i uh so i mean honestly like i just graduated in march so i haven't really worked on anything after that but uh, yeah in college we did have to so yeah my graduation project was a fiction um yeah i think that i think most young people are are kind of genre agnostic now when it comes to you know working in all these realms uh and i find that really exciting um what, what as a young person just you know just out of school thinking about your career and thinking about you know just the times that we're living in in terms of things going online how festivals are doing um i think the the state of sort of uh, censorship and free speech in the subcontinent and the world how do you think about the making and your career and like what are what are the thoughts that you guys uh, struggle with or the things that excite you about being a filmmaker in 2021 yeah uh, so actually um the thing is that especially when you're in these film schools and stuff you get into this kind of um you like a kind of film which is you know super grand how do i how do i say what a film school film is basically oh it's so meaningful and slow and la 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 and all of those things and uh and of course we obviously haven't made feature films right we make short films because how are we going to make feature films but um i think realizing ke you know who is going to watch this film and how are you going to make them watch it that's a big question like even if i were to make a film today and you know like independently or whatever then the the scope of course is definitely larger than it once was but at the same time like you may not be able to make the film that you want to make and that's always the case <laughs> so yeah i don't know especially definitely you're right about the censorship thing i mean uh, one of my classmates had made when we were making documentaries that made something related to the riots and uh, people were like oh scary you know be careful and don't talk too much about it don't give your opinions on it all of that uh, that's definitely the reality of india at the moment um so i think at least i've avoided that <laughs> i don't know um but, but being from you know being from uh having ties to a minority community um yeah. and and you say in your bio that you have this interest in in reality which which tends to be subjective so how do you um how do you approach uh, your work then um Could you reword the question? I'm not sure how to answer. <laughs> uh, well, I'm wondering. I know that in these times, identity and your identity okay. uh, as you approach the subjects as a as a documentary filmmaker, especially something that's being talked about a lot. Um, uh, and I, I've spoken to a lot of, for, for example, Muslim filmmakers from India who feel quite underrepresented. And, and as you, yeah. uh, as a Parsi filmmaker. is is identity something that's very important right now in in dealing with subjective reality in india uh, okay interesting um so yes like so for example how uh, like this film is about parsis and even my graduation project was not that was not my idea initially but it ended up being a it's a parsi family and uh, and i think one One of the issues that I do uh, is that I realize that a film is so much more meaningful if you know the context as a filmmaker. Like if I am writing a film and directing a film and it's about you know some person that I really don't know, even if I want to, you know, I'm like okay, I really care about minorities. I want to make a film about Boris, and I can do it, of course, and I would like to do it, sure, but. Um, the issue is that it's very difficult to get the authenticity in filmmaking i mean i think that's a general issue but uh, so yeah at the moment i'm clearly 
like I have been you know in that same space because I'm like okay you know this is something I know but I yeah that is definitely an issue because even if if someone else is like oh you know there aren't enough films about uh whatever x community or this kind of topic but they don't have any idea about what it is or how it works it just it's quite stupid so yeah definitely the more voices of different people in different contexts that would add to the conversation and make i mean you it kind of shapes the way that you look at things right if you see a film and you've never seen a person from x country before that is your opinion of that person of that country so of course the more people with different perspectives that come into filmmaking in the better well it's it's very exciting to hear your voice uh, as a filmmaker um it's, it's such a promising film and it's 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 really nice to see that coming that quality film coming out of film school so congratulations and we're so excited uh to share your work here and and I hope uh we will find more opportunities to share your work uh in Pakistan and any work that you make in the future so I'm really looking Thank forward you. <laughs> Thanks for Shaya. Thanks for thanks for joining us and we'll uh, um this is the last film of our Pame uh, and Dap showcase this weekend. Um it was the last of three films and we're really personally excited about um South Asian films traveling in, within, you know, all of South Asia and so um uh, yeah. a, a special a special happiness to have you with us and have all the films we had this weekend. Um uh, Thank you so connecting. much. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks, Chaya. We'll Thank have you, you again. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> sure. Bye.